Hello guys, how have you been? Well, I hope you are all okay. I'm going to talk in this video about Google Dorks and how they are actually used in hacking. I know this term doesn't sound like a threat, but in my opinion, it has to be taken into consideration. Now, let's get started. First of all, we should understand what are Google Dorks. Well, they're really just some search queries on Google, but a bit more complex than the usual ones. To be easier to understand, let's just see that you can apply some filters on these searches in order to narrow the results. So basically, they're normal queries but with extra filters. If you're familiar with SQL, you can compare a Google Dork with a select statement where you can apply uh, several where clauses. Well, how do we actually apply these filters? In order to do this, we need to use some specific operators. To assign a value to that operator, you just have to type the operator name, and colon, and then the value itself. Again, if you know some SQL, you can think of these operators as being column names for a table. Now, I will show you a couple of operators, but they're not the only ones available. I have left a link in the description where you can find out more about this topic. The first one is in URL. What does it do? Its name says everything. It filters the results that have the value you assigned in their URLs. For instance, if you set your value for in URL operator to blah blah.com, the results you will get will be pages which only have that string in their URLs. The second operator I want to show you is in title. It is similar to the previous one. The difference is it applies the filter to the title of the page. Another one is in text. Same thing, just that now it searches only through pages text. The last one I want to present is file type or ext. You can use any of these two. The effect is the same. This filter shows in results uh, only the pages which point to files having the specific extension you mentioned. Now, some examples because practice is the most important. A lot of examples are available on ExploitDB website. I will leave a link in the description for this. Many of the examples I will present are from there, but you can create your own combination of operators and values to get your custom results. In our first example, I will use a combination of two operators, site and in URL. I'll put cnn.com as a value for site and login for in URL. Basically, it will return the results that have login in the URL and for which the site is cnn.com. So, site cnn.com in URL login. Here we have the results. If we hover on the first link, we can see it has login in the URL and the site is cnn.com. Uh, let's access it. And here is the login portal. Okay, okay, okay. And what does this have to do with hacking? Well, this is a very good question. Let's say someone wants to hack cnn.com. By finding login portals, that person can attempt to apply SQL injection and find a way in. Depending on how the security of that login portal has been implemented, he might fail, but he might also succeed and find a way in. In the next example, I will look for a robots file for a specific website. No, robots file is not a document with a list of robots. Briefly, it is a text file which is configured to allow or disallow search engine robots to crawl some specific pages. And not only this. Compared to our previous example, this time we will have an extra operator, file type. So, our search will be in URL robots, the file type, we're going to set txt, and the site well, I will not tell the site for this time for security reasons. I will also blur the content for the same reasons. If we have a look here, and let's first open the page. If we 
have a look here, um, you can see that there are a lot of pages marked for this allow. Uh, using this method, hackers can find out about specific pages that are not available to access from the standard website, and who knows what information they might find there. Another case we can consider is the following one uh, in URL put FTP in title index of and site. Well, I'm going to put something random here. Uh, nice cool website.com. I don't know if it, if it exists. The point of this Google Dork uh, is to find out if there is any FTP server for the site we chose. The value index of uh, for in title has been set because usually that's the text we find on the main FTP page. And searching, well, nothing found. In our situation, nothing was found. But if we change the site, we might find. Now, so many FTPs are public and maybe that's not a very good idea. If it's not requesting any type of authentication, you will be able to access those pages and the content available there without any problems. And you can find files with many things. One more test we can do is to check for unprotected AWS S3 buckets. This is similar to the FTP search we previously performed. Now I'm looking for text files with password keyword. So, site Amazon AWS.com in text we'll put password file type txt and I'm going to add S3 also for bucket. And, okay, you can see there are a couple of results. Again, accessing these links you might be able to access some private files that haven't been protected and that might have various sensitive content. We could try to find some credentials on pages that are created using WordPress, a very common CMS used on a large scale. So, in URL, I'm going to put WP content, not content, slash uploads and text, I'm going to have credential. I assign this value to the in URL operator because WP content is a specific folder for from WordPress structure of directories. And here we have a couple of results. If I hover on this page, you can see in the bottom uh, of the screen how the link contains WP content uploads. Here also, there is a possibility to find sensitive files, not only of, on this link, but on many others. The last example I'm going to show is how to find pages using a specific system or program. I always hear the following Google dork. In text, powered by virtual airlines. Many systems, CMS, tools, have a sort of signature when they are installed. And many of the users who install them forget or don't know how to remove those. In our case, the text I assigned as value for in-text operator is the signature for this VM system. Hitting enter and we see a couple of results. This search will return the pages who have this string in their text, and most probably, the majority of them use this system. And how does this help hackers? Well, knowing such details can allow you to look for known vulnerabilities for that system or tool. And if the user didn't apply a fix or update, it is still vulnerable, which means a hacker can actually exploit that. Now, there is actually a recent vulnerability found for this system, so a couple of sites which use VAM may still be vulnerable. Okay, these were the examples I wanted to show you. I hope they were useful and you actually learned something from this video. Let me know in the comments what you liked and what you didn't. And if you enjoy my content, hit the like and subscribe button. Last but not least, I want to thank you for your time and for watching my video. Until next time.
Bye bye.